I started my baking career when I was pretty young. Baking now has become a process of creating memories. Baking has always been a big part of my life. Uh, I would even say that my father would have sort of passed it on to me uh, because he too was interested in food and cooking and baking. In the next few episodes, I will be making some recipes that are really close to my heart. These are things that are very famous in my family. I look forward to spending the next four episodes with you, showing you all I can do and all I can make, and helping you make it too. So, I'm Arasha Hetige from Sugar Salt and Sprinkles. Welcome everyone. My name is Roland Agunasekara. This is my home name. Welcome to another episode of Homemade on High TV. Inspired by all things Harry Potter, today I will be making my Butterbeer Biscuit Pudding. Butter beer is actually a drink that um, is introduced to us in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling and it's supposed to have really lovely butterscotchy caramel tones with a little bit of alcohol as well. So the first thing that we're going to do today is we're going to make the caramel. So I've got about two thirds cup of sugar here which I'm going to be putting into a dry pan. I'm just going to put the uh, fire on. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Just a couple of splashes rather than make it come from um, the dry sugar. So my sugar is nicely mixed in with all the water. I'm just going to make sure every little bit of the sugar is in fact wet. Right. Okay. So once the sugar starts dissolving, we don't want to stir it at all. And I've got a small silicon brush here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip it in a little bit of water and just brush the edges of the pot where there are a few granules of sugar standing out uh, just so that those sugar uh, bits don't start burning right so once the sugar is slowly melting I'm just going to swirl the pot like this like I said before we don't want to stir it at all because if you do stir a caramel, it will cause the sugar to crystallize and you won't get that lovely dark smoothness in your caramel. So making caramel is a process that you need to be quite alert and watchful. You can't really leave the caramel to do its thing and, leave, and just leave the room. You have to watch it really carefully um, because the caramel can burn really quickly and there's a very fine line between dark and caramelized bittersweet sugar to burnt. Okay, now if you look carefully, um, you can see that the bubbles have started to get a little bit bigger uh, than the tiny little bubbles that we had before. And that's because the caramel is now on its way. Um, and it's smoking, if you can see there's quite a bit of smoke coming up as well, which means that the sugar is now slowly starting to caramelize. So I'm just going to reduce the flame very slightly because I don't want it to burn too fast. So you can see that the sugar has started to get lovely and golden. It's becoming darker and darker. So our sugar has become nice and dark now. So I'm going to add the milk. You can see it's bubbling away. And there's little bits of caramel on my whisk here which will melt down as it goes on. Now I switched off the flame just because I didn't want my sugar to burn too much. And see all the caramel has dissolved now. Right, so this is our caramel milk base which we will be using for the butter beer biscuit pudding. And now I'm going to get on to making the creme patissier or the custard. 
Right, so now I'm going to get on with the ingredients for my creme patissiere. So I've got four egg yolks here, which I'm just going to put into my bowl. And to that, I'm going to add two tablespoonful of corn flour. And I'm going to add about a teaspoon of vanilla extract as well. The vanilla extract works really well with the butterscotch because it gives a lovely floral taste to the whole dish. Right, so I'm just going to whisk it. So this is a different whisk to the um, sugar, caramelized sugar whisk because I don't want that flavor in here at the moment. So I'm just going to whisk it nice and hard just until all the corn flour and the egg have really nicely combined. I don't want to get any air in it at this stage because the custard or your creme patissiere is all about smoothness and lusciousness. So this looks just about done. So I'm going to get the heat back on to my caramelized milk mixture just so that it's going to be slightly warm. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to temper my egg yolks. Uh, tempering egg yolks basically means bringing up the temperature of the egg slowly and cooking it so that it doesn't scramble. Because if you add this egg mixture into this hot liquid all at once, it is going to scramble because it's going to cook too quickly. So I'm just going to pour it in. I'm going to pour a little bit in and I'm going to whisk. pretty fast and I'm going to add the rest of it as well just because I want to strain it out into my pot so I'm going to put that here and I'm going to whisk, pour it in I'm just going to whisk this um, so what we're doing now is we are cooking the custard and you want it to thicken so the egg yolks and the corn flour will come to temperature and it will thicken the custard and it will be lovely and smooth by the time it's done. Oh, I can already feel it's getting a little bit thicker. So I'm just going to keep it on for a couple of minutes. I'm going to whisk continuously because I don't want any lumps to be in there. And you can see that it's kind of um, increasing in volume very slightly as well and it's coming together nicely and it smells amazing because that lovely caramelized sugar fragrance is really coming through and yeah and it's I can feel like it's a lot thicker now and you can see the texture is see it's like quite thick so I'm just gonna switch it off and I'm gonna take it off the heat and I'm just gonna whisk it because I want to get that hot heat out of it now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add some dark rum. Um, so this is an optional ingredient and if you want to make this non-alcoholic, you can. Um, I like using rum here because I feel that the flavor of the rum really complements the butterscotch notes of this dessert. And I want to add a little bit of salt as well. And I'm adding the salt while the creme pat is still hot, just so that it will dissolve through. The salt will work to balance out all that sweetness. I'm going to put this to cool and I will see you in a little bit to get on to the rest of our dessert. Okay, so I've got my creme patissiere nice and cool here in this bowl and now I'm going to get uh, ready with the cream. So I'm just going to whip this. Um, make sure that your cream is really nice and cold because the colder the cream, the quicker it whips. And I want to make sure that I get as much air as possible. This is when we're going to start incorporating air into the dessert. And the cream gives the whole thing a lovely light and um, delicious richness actually. I'm just going to finish whipping the cream. You can see it's just getting thick now. Be sure to, to not over whip your cream 
because if you do over with your cream it will become butter and there's no salvaging it right so my cream is done I'm going to just add a little bit of my cream into the creme pat just to lighten up everything so I'm just going to add a little bit to begin with and you can see the color is going to change now and it's going to it's looking lovely and rippled and it's just lightening everything so I'm going to add the rest of my cream now and you want to fold the cream in gently so that you don't lose any of the air that you spent time um, creating so yeah and you can see how lovely and light it looks right so our cream is mixed nicely so I'm just going to taste it now because this is when we have to adjust all the flavors unbelievably good I like caramel flavors so this is really good we're going to now assemble the biscuit pudding so I'm doing it in these glasses here so I've got two glasses and I've got some milk to which I'm just going to add a tiny bit of rum just to give it that little extra kick so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to prepare the peanut praline or the panikaju uh, so this is just basically store-bought um, peanut praline that I've got here I'm going to put it in a ziplock bag I'm going to close this and I've got my rolling pin here so what I'm going to do now is bash I've split the bag as you can see so I'm just going to rectify that by holding it down like this peanuts going everywhere and I'm going to put it into the bowl right so now we're going to assemble our butter beer biscuit pudding so I've got some mari biscuits here which I'm going to dip really briefly in the cold milk and rum mixture and you need to remember that the moussey filling here has a fair bit of moisture as well which will be absorbed by the biscuits so I'm going to crumble the biscuits up like this and put them to the bottom of my glass just so that it creates a little bit of height and it will also make it easier to eat rather than having a whole biscuit for people to break with their spoons and I'm going to add a couple dollops of this lovely cream that we've done so I just want to make sure that I get this cream all the way to the edges because it'll look lovely in, uh, in the layers of the pudding I'm going to add a little bit of the peanut praline once again making sure I've got a fair bit of peanuts at the edges and a little bit in the center as well and these butterscotch chips now if you don't have access to butterscotch chips um, it's not a very easy ingredient to get your hands on um, you can use white chocolate chips or you can just leave, leave it out that's fine just add a little bit more of the peanuts right so that's one layer done I'm just going to keep adding the layers I think this glass can take about maybe three layers altogether um, remember it's quite a rich dessert uh, because of all the cream and sugar that's in there so make sure that you get your biscuits all in the corners two good spoonfuls will do I think for this layer right and now the peanut praline and the butterscotch chips and our last layer of biscuits I'm not going to add a lot into this um, because it's quite high up in the glass already maybe just this piece and the most of the time. this goes into the fridge to set for a couple of hours and once it's set we can garnish it right so my butter beer biscuit pudding has been setting in the fridge and I've just taken it out and they're looking really lovely 
So I'm going to just garnish the tops with a little bit of the butterscotch chips and you want your um, top to just set and firm up a little bit before you add the chips and the peanut praline on top and now you can just go literally go nuts with the peanut praline right there you have it that is my butter beer biscuit pudding um, Harry Potter inspired I do hope you try it and I really hope you love it as much as I do Okay, so I'm going to taste now. Just going to make sure I get a little bit of all the layers. And it's bittersweet and butterscotchy caramel with that hint of rum. So, there you have it. This is my Harry Potter inspired butter beer biscuit pudding. So, from all of us here at Homemade, I'm Irasha from Sugar, Salt and Sprinkles. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome back to another episode of Homemade. I am Rolanda Gunasekara and today I'm going to be teaching you the exciting, scary, but amazing Paris breast. Uh, but it's also used with shoe paste. Now I will start with the water. I add the water into the pan. I add the milk. And I also add the butter. I will begin to boil my mixture. What you want to do is you don't want it to be too hot. So you keep it at a medium heat. Now I will slowly begin to dissolve the butter into the water and milk. I do this because I don't want um, the butter to not dissolve evenly and I also don't want the rest of the mixture to get hotter than the butter. Try as much as you can to dissolve all the butter before it begins to boil. So now as you can see the mixture is starting to boil. This is where I add the flour. So you want to add the flour very fast and very quickly because you don't want it to end up clumping and you don't want there to be big chunks of flour that's unmixed. At this point you can reduce the heat a bit but make sure you cook it so that the dough dries up as much as possible. And now when your batter looks something like this, don't worry, just take it off the heat. And now, we're going to add it into the mixing bowl. So like I said, if there are pieces of flour, now take your mixer and mix the batter extremely well, allowing all the heat to come out of it. And at the same time, the, what the mixer is going to do is it's going to break the pieces of flour that's stuck together and that has not mixed. It's a very simple but very efficient. By doing this, I can use the batter and I can also save it if I do mess it up. All right, on to the next step. Now you have your four eggs and you should add them one by one. As you add each egg, you will notice the batter starting to loosen up a bit, becoming more smooth and liquid. It should be a fairly quick mix given the heat of the batter. And yes, that's what you want. You want to have that. You can see it coming together now. Add another egg. 
in. What you want to do is not add too much egg. Because one of the main reasons this dish does not work is when you add too much egg thinking the batter is too hard. But the right number of eggs will make your batter soft, smooth and almost ribbony. It will have a ribbon like texture to it. So you want this kind of consistency where it's smooth and not too tough, just right and it has that soft texture. Once you have that, you're good to stop. So for this I'm using uh, a piping bag and I'm using um, a nozzle called BD. And now what you want to do is you want to take a spoon and your mixture and put it into the piping bag. Maybe half the bag and once you're done you are ready to pipe. Just snip off a bit of the top, not too much. You don't want to make a big hole because your nozzle will come out and then you're ready to pipe and you can either mark it if you like or just if you're good with your hands draw a circle. This is the traditional shape of the Paribas. Another one. So you can draw as many as you like or if you want to use the extra batter for something else you can do the traditional eclairs as well which is completely fine. Now I'm going to bake this beauty and I'll see you soon. Now everything is baked and everything looks beautiful. So this is what a parry breast looks like before the filling of course. Right, so I will take my parry breast and I will use a bread knife or a saw knife. And what you want to do is you want to cut it in the middle slowly but evenly. Be careful not to cut too hard or too fast because you might end up damaging or breaking the paribus. And there you have it, two perfect sides. And I will start with the whipped cream. Pipe a bit there, a bit there. They're going to alternate using the chocolate and the whipped cream. And now the chocolate. Chocolate mousse is beautiful. The texture is really nice. And last but not least, the strawberries. So what you should do is cut the top, the leafy part. You want to cut some nice slices. Don't worry about them being too big or too small. And you're going to keep them in the center of the whipped cream and the chocolate, leaving a gap between each like this. The reason I'm using only the insides and not the side is so that I have that effect that you can see on here. Then on top goes the top layer and this is a Paris press. Now it's time for my favorite part, the tasting. So what people usually do is they cut it depending on how many people there are and they serve it accordingly. So since there's just me, I'm going to cut a tiny part off. Uh, what you aim to do is to have a part with all the flavors. That includes the whipped cream, the mousse and the strawberry. Bon appétit. Mm. Yum. That is great. Thank you once again for everyone tuning in to Homemade. I'm Rolando Gunsekera and I'll see you next time.